Good morning. Thank you for joining us this uh, a bit chilly, but getting sunnier Saturday. Yeah, and actually the weather would be pretty good over the next few days for a festival, it if would. you fancy this. Do you feel a festival coming on? Oh, I feel, you know, maybe some point Begin in the to future. Dream. Begin to yeah, dream. Yeah, something that festival organisers are definitely looking at. We know some festivals have been postponed until next year, but others are putting plans in place in the hope that they can go ahead. When <laughs> Lots of them hoping that the government can uh, come up with a kind of insurance scheme that protect them uh, if they had to cancel the coronavirus. Colin Patterson has been looking at what that could mean. This is where the UK's music festival season is set to start. Average Park in Kent. It's the oldest deer park in England and um, it's the most fabulous place ever and home of Black Deer Festival. Deb Schilling and Jill T are long-term friends who have now become festival bosses. We like Ant and Deck. She always <laughs> answers that question. <laughs> After careers in radio and live music, they decided to set up their own event, celebrating country and Americana music, the Black Deer Festival. Best new festival on the block. We, we won in for our first year. Um, yeah, promoter of the year, music event of the year. So we've really made our mark. What makes it so special? Wow. Um, the fact that it's run by two women. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. There's loads of no. people in that team. <laughs> the festival is scheduled to start on the 25th of June, just four days after the date given by the government as the earliest time all legal limits on social contact could be removed in England. But Debs and Jill believe Black Deer will go ahead. This is the front of your main stage. This is where Robert plants. Yes. Van Morrison will be. Yes, a little bit further over this way after the... Here. <laughs> <laughs> and they are able to put everything in place because many people are asking to only be paid if it does happen. Suppliers are all aware of that. So ordinarily, we'd have put lots of deposits on everything by now, securing all of our kit, all the infrastructure for the festival. You know, we've absolutely, um, you know, done that, but, but everybody understands. So everybody's holding payments, holding payments until... And the bands? Uh, well, the bands, are like the agents, have been, they've been great too, haven't they? Yeah. You can't, I mean, we're we're working as a community, it's unbelievable. Are yeah. either of your houses at risk? <laughs> <laughs> Our houses are always at risk. <laughs> <laughs> One change is that travel restrictions mean that the lineup now is almost entirely made up of acts from the British Isles, such as Ward Thomas, the first UK country act ever to have a number one album. During lockdown, they released a new album, Invitation, but had to reschedule their tour three times, so are thrilled at the idea of playing the festival. It means the world to us because, and I think we, I can speak for so many other artists out there, so many other bands, their whole team, the crew, everything, who have lost work this year. I think it means so much to so many people. And for us, we just can't wait to be back on stage. I think as performers, everyone sort of not dared look forward to a live show because it's something that's always been like far enough in the future for us to be like, oh, well, maybe we'll be allowed. And I think um, to have dates in the diary to actually look forward to is really, really, really exciting. However, a note of caution from the boss of the Association of Independent Festivals. He believes the lack of a government-backed festival insurance scheme will mean more events cancel in the next fortnight. It's an enormous risk for any independent festival to proceed with costs. And let's bear in mind that it, it costs an average of over £6 million to stage an independent festival. So I think probably the, the later you are and the, the smaller you are, the more uh, reason you have for optimism. Back at the Black Deer Festival, optimism is not something Debs and Jill are lacking. It, it will mean the world to me to open our gates. It really will. And to watch the, on, on people laughing and smiling and all the faces of people just having the best time. That's what I will, I will cry. <laughs> you will? <laughs> I'll be crying, yeah, for lots of reasons. <laughs> Colin Patterson, BBC News, Eridge Park, Kent.
Well, another festival that is still hoping, planning to go ahead this year is Kendall Calling in Cumbria. And here to tell us more, one of the organisers, Andy Smith. Hi, Andy. I've, I've been to Kendall Hello. Calling. I've also been to Blue Dot, which I think you look after as well. So really excited that, that Kendall Calling might be going ahead this year. But how optimistic are you that it will happen? Or is it sleepless nights every night, kind of worrying about the different things that might get in the way? Well, I, th I think it's like Jill said there. It's it's, it's always um, always sleepless nights. I think when you're running a festival, there's um, there's, there's so many plates in the air at any one time, uh, and obviously more so than ever this year. Uh, but that said, we've got a wonderful team of people that we work with, and I've got utter confidence that you know if it can go ahead, it will go ahead. And of course, people will have bought tickets last year. So have you just effectively transferred over all those tickets to this year, or are there still tickets available? Um, well, we did. We, we sold a lot of tickets last year, and uh, there was a wonderful support from the um, from the festival community. Um, about ninety percent of people asked to roll their tickets over, and that, that's a figure that we're seeing across uh, across many other festivals as well. And that's been why the festivals have managed to um, you know make it through to this year. Uh, we're very fortunate. Uh, yesterday we put out our lineup, and well, the first part of it anyway, and uh, we, we've sold all the tickets. And this is despite. Um then you know not being a government backed insurance scheme that we heard about in Colin's piece there um so you obviously have the confidence to go ahead with this regardless w was that was the lack of a uh, an insurance scheme an issue for you i mean i don't, I don't believe uh, a decision's been made uh, been reached yet by the government on the insurance scheme i know they were still debating it as recently as um, as, as two days ago in the in the house of uh, commons um it will be a huge help to many festivals if they do get that insurance scheme off the ground um, as, as they have done in Estonia and the Netherlands. So I'm, I'm really hopeful that we can follow as a country in their footsteps. Yeah, I mean, the government have given us a statement on this and they basically say that they're still deciding, but they, they want to make sure that they don't uh, mislead people like you, that they want to be absolutely clear. They'll only announce it if it, when it's actually happening. And they also point to other stuff like the, the, the culture programme that they've invested uh, millions of pounds in to try to, to help the the music and, and the arts industry. How supported are you feeling right now by by the government, by by the country? Um, I, it, it's difficult. There's a lot of schemes that um, many people uh, or many event, uh, events or uh, organisations didn't qualify for. Um, but then the, the, the organisations and people who did get this funding, I think they're, they're very well supported. Um, but yeah, we, we're liaising constantly with the authorities and there's, there's very much um, a keenness both from the organisations and the authorities for events to go ahead this year. Are you going to require any ticket holders to have any kind of certification like vaccine or negative test at all? Uh, at this point, it's too early to speculate on that, uh, but we will be following what the guidance is. Yeah, I mean, do you think it is if something like that was required, is it practically possible? How much extra workload would it require from the organisational point of view? That is something that we will be working through when we know it. At, th at this point, there's just so many unknowns. We can't uh, possibly uh, um, plan for every eventuality. So that, that's why we're, uh, as, as a group, uh, I, I know you had Paul Reed, uh, Association of Independent Festivals, talking earlier, um, and th they've been so helpful on, on liaising with, their, with, with the authorities and Really, it's just gonna we, we're gonna keep checking in and and hoping you know when the guidance is out there, uh, we'll, we'll know exactly what we need to do. It must be quite a strange time for you, Andy, because you, you're speaking with confidence in one way about the festivals going ahead and your belief in it happening. But like with passports and and insurance and other issues, there are still huge uncertainties, aren't there? What what, what keeps you going and thinking? You know, yeah, we've got to make this happen. Well, we, we asked our audience, we asked our partners, we asked our friends, we asked our suppliers, what do you want? Um, and the overwhelming response, as seen by you know selling all the tickets yesterday, the overwhelming response is that people want that festival to look forward to, they need that community, uh, they, they want to get back into those fields. Uh, so we thought, oh, we've got we've got to give it our all. That's, that's, uh, that's the least we owe people. Okay, Andy, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, good luck with the summer. Uh, let's hope it does go ahead. I went to Kendall Calling, in fact, a few years ago with my mum and dad. They were just 70 and it was their first ever festival. Possibly their last. Did they behave? <laughs> well, I mean, they were just, yeah, just on the right side of badly behaved. I, I bet you were the one trying to double check on them, right? <laughs> you, were, you were looking after them. Well, where do you think you've been? This is too late. Get back to your tent. Yeah. Oh, it was brilliant. Let's